All right. So for this first one, what I noticed is that this oxygen, um, even though it looks like it only has two bond sites, we know that can't be the case because it has to fill its octet. So remember, this actually has two lone pairs. Okay. If you didn't draw those in, then you're going to be super confused. All right. That has two lone pairs. So that means this is going to be sp3. And it's sp3 that has two lone pairs. So that means that the name of this is bent. Is that cool? Let's look at this next one. This next one looks like it only has two bond sites. I'm talking about this one right here. It looks like it only has two, but remember there's a hydrogen there. You have to draw that hydrogen because if not, the octet wouldn't be completed. Now, if this is throwing you off adding stuff, you're like, Johnny, how would I know there's a hydrogen? How would I know that there's a lone pair? Go back and review what I was talking about with the octet rule and with bond line structures because that means that you're having a hard time interpreting a bond line structure. That means you have to go back and practice. All right. So the bond line structure means there's an H there. So now I know that I have three bond sites and there's no lone pairs. So this is just going to be sp2 and it's going to be trigonal planar. Cool. Then we have our last one over here. Once again, it looks like it has two bond sites, but we know that can't be the case because then carbon would be very angry at us. It needs two hydrogens. Okay. How did we know that? From using bond line structures. So we have four different groups here. They're all atoms. No, there's no lone pairs. So this is going to be sp3 and it's going to be tetrahedral. Easy, right? Once you learn it, it's like second nature, but at the beginning it can be a little confusing. So now I hope that made sense to you guys and I want to do some practice problems.